and welcome aboard to our one hour uh, introductory marketing and advertising uh, journey. I'm George Ervidis, and uh, it's a pleasure to have with me as a co captain Dr. Evi Dekuru. I will consult my notes now because if I have made any mistake, Evi will get angry. Evi holds a PhD degree in organizational learning and knowledge management from Aristobelio University of Thessaloniki. She received an MSc in media management from Stirling University in England, uh, a master in business administration, and a bachelor's degree in journalism and uh, mass media communication. She has published research work on marketing and corporate communication, media management, entrepreneurship, and innovation. She is currently employed by the Training and Development Unit in the University of Nicosia, and she teaches at the University Business School. Hello, Evie. Hello, and I would like to introduce you? you. I'm really great. I'm really excited that I'm going to have a, web, a webinar with you. So I would like to introduce you my co-traveler, George Zervidis. He has served the advertising industry in managerial positions for more than 20 years before he actually launched his own marketing and branding consultancy. He calls himself a brand believer and actually what he, what he, he really is. And among his numerous duties, he actually teaches marketing, advertising and brand marketing at the University of Nicosia. So we are all, all his colleagues are really happy and proud of collaborating with him. So George, shall we start our journey? Yes, it's a lovely day huh, for a boat okay. trip today. It's an excellent day. The temperature here is really high, something like 35 degrees. So I think it's time for marketing okay. and it's time to decide whether everything is marketing or not. I really want oh, what do you direct, think? Is it a direct reply from you on this issue. Yeah, and uh, I would like to urge uh, the people who watch us now to send us messages. You will read them uh, heavy because I cannot see on the screen any messages that come in. Uh, I would love to answer uh, because, as you know, dialogue is better than a monologue. So feel free mm -hmm. to write a message anytime during the um, presentation and we'll get back to you to answer it. Uh, so, Evi, do you think everything mm -hmm. is marketing? I think everything is marketing, but I think that after today's webinar, I'll be more able to be sure to give you a direct answer. But I'm also waiting the same from you. Because sometimes I actually accuse okay. marketing let's, of creating let's. needs uh, and trying to convince people that everything is marketing. I believe so, but some people do not. So we have the difficult task to convince all people that everything is marketing. No? Do you think we can manage it? Mm -hmm. Well, I will not try to convince anybody. I will try to give the facts as they are and uh, um, mm -hmm. the people who watch us will decide if everything is marketing or not. But let's start. Okay, okay. I think it's about time to start. Okay, but for this journey, we need an equipment. Okay, and which is this equipment? Okay. Is advertising. We're going to explain in, de in detail what advertising is. Sales promotion, personal selling, public relations and direct marketing. And wh what are all these? I think we can go to the next slide. Okay. Actually, all these are the components of what we call marketing communications mix. Um, but what is marketing communication? Modern marketing calls for much more than just developing a good product, uh, charging an attractive price and making this product accessible. Companies need to communicate with their present and also potential customers and all stakeholders and the general public. So marketing communications are actually the need and the mean are the means by which companies try to inform, convince and remind consumers both directly and indirectly about the products and the brands they sell. And it's also a means by which the company can establish a dialogue and build uh, profitable relationships with consumers. So marketing communications allow companies to link their brands to other people, places, events, other brands, stories, experiences, feelings. And let's start with advertising. 
What is advertising? Advertising can be considered as any paid form of non-personal uh, presentation and promotion of ideas. Before, I mean, before giving yeah. the definition of advertising, let's give the definition of marketing first. Okay. Uh, okay. And you are right because we are going to concentrate on advertising mm -hmm. today. But let's first define marketing. There is a definition okay. that I quite like. Because it's very simple, straightforward, and very sweet. And it is what it is. Okay. Uh, marketing is a management process, process responsible for identifying, anticipating, and satisfying customer needs profitably. This is marketing, quite simple. The difficult thing, of course, is to get it. needs. Every marketeer needs to identify correctly, very clearly, the needs of its target group. Otherwise, he cannot or she cannot achieve the objective. And talking about needs, it's the right time to uh, see what um, some people, one of the greatest marketeers of all times, for example, this is Mr. Charles Revlon, okay, founder and CEO of Revlon Cosmetics. And he said something magical. In the factory, we make cosmetics. In the store, we sell hope. And this is exactly what it is. We are not talking about the basic needs, about the obvious needs, okay, about the primary needs. Nobody uh, buys a car today in order to go drive from point A to point B. Nobody buys shoes in order to protect uh, his or her shoes, okay? The criteria changed. So Mr. Evron said that we are not selling cosmetics. We are uh, selling hope in order for women to feel great, okay? Another example is Harley Davidson. All those who have a Harley Davidson bike, they know that they bought it in order to feel the feeling of freedom. This is the need for a Harley Davidson rider. Coke, for so many years, they are selling happiness. Coke is not a sweet, dark uh, uh, refreshment, okay? You can find many of those in the market. Coke is about happiness, it's about memories, it's about feelings, it's about sharing. And this is what they sell. So the needs of people are there. We marketeers have to identify them, okay, and meet them in a different way than the competition. And this is where positioning comes that we will talk later. And talking about needs, I would like to mention a few things about the Maslow hierarchy of needs. Uh, marketeers know that pyramid, psychologists know that pyramid, it's a pyramid made by Maslow, a great psychologist, with five tires. From bottom to the top, the psychological needs, safety needs, love and belonging needs, esteem, and on the top, self actualization. And what is very interesting these days of coronavirus is that all this is mixed up, and all the needs of people are squeezed in the first tire of psychological needs. Of psychology. Nobody cares about money now. Nobody cares about career. Nobody is making long plans, long-term plans. Nobody is planning where to spend their holidays. Now the needs are different. The needs are to be safe, to be safe ourselves, our family, our loved ones. Okay. So marketeers have to adjust their message according to the situation, according to the need in the specific time of their target group. So we don't see um, uh, advertisements regarding holidays or cars. Maybe we see, but the, the, the message is adjusted. We see messages and advertisements of uh, supermarkets, but it's not about uh, special offers. It's about hygiene, how they protect their clients, how they keep the rules so the clients feel safe to go and shop from there. So it's very important to identify the need in each and every stage uh, of the product life cycle or the era we are in for the marketeers and to address those needs and to satisfy those needs in the best way. And what is also very interesting, 
Yes, what is also very interesting concerning the pyramid is the fact that in different cultures, the different uh, stages in this pyramid are different. For example, it's totally different in Asia and totally different in Europe based on global marketing principles. And this but is really, really you know, impressive. The, the, interesting, the interesting thing today is that for the first time in history, I believe, uh, after the Second uh, World War, is uh, the, the needs of the people are on the same tire at the same time. People in the States, in Russia, in Cyprus, in England, in Africa, they don't care about anything else but to be safe at this time, okay? Two months later, maybe you have a different need, but now the globe is at the same stage, at the same tire, they have the same needs to be safe. And this is very interesting and very interesting for the marketeers. Let's yeah. start with advertising. Okay, so let's start with advertising, a really strong weapon of marketing. So advertising is definitely a business activity, employing creative techniques in order to design convincing communications, because as we said before, one of the main names of marketing communications is to convince. In mass media, because we actually transmit the advertising message through mass media that promote ideas, goods, services in a manner consistent with the achievement of the advertiser's objective. Because as we're going to explain later in the different steps of the designing of advertising campaign, we need to have objectives. And advertising is actually a tool that marketeers should use in order to achieve these objectives. And also consistent with the delivery of consumer satisfaction, because as Yorgos said before, marketing needs to create and offer value to customers. So we need to have to have in mind that the major aim of marketing is to create value, deliver value to the customer and respond to customer needs in the most effective way, in the optimum way. And of course, consistent with the development of social and economic welfare. Okay, shall we go? Okay. okay. Yeah. Huh? Yes. I couldn't hear. I'm sorry. Yes, can you repeat because I couldn't hear you? I hope that the other... Okay. Because so, it's a user in the game? Yes, of course, yeah. of course. And it's actually one of my favorite pictures, this one. Huh? Okay, yes. Okay. Advertiser is definitely a user. Okay, because advertiser is an art. Okay, and the whole marketing is an art. And I would say that according to Kotler, marketing is a combination of both science and art because we need to use art in order to convince. Okay, because advertise the main tool for creating advertising is creativity. Okay, so advertising is an art and it's actually the art of influencing human action, awake the desire to possess, to buy new products, and also. Uh, one of the main aims of advertising, and we're going to explain this in the next slide about AIDA model, is to urge consumer into action to buy our product. So I think that everything becomes clearer in the next slide. Yes, exactly this one. So although advertising is not synonymous with marketing, advertising is a critical marketing tool, a weapon of marketing. Advertising is the broad and direct communication that introduces your brand and your product to the public, educates about your products and services, prompts people with an interest to take action, and also provides urgency You convey special promotions. So we need now to explain the AIDA model that I really like and I think that students uh, also like a lot. So the AIDA model is actually an acronym and it stands for attention, interest, desire, and of course, action. And it is a model used in marketing that actually describes the steps a, a customer goes through in the process of buying a product and of course, of making the buying decision. So the first step in marketing is actually to consider how to attract the attention of consumers because we need to struggle to attract the attention of consumers. And once the consumer is, is aware that the product or service exists, the marketeer must work on increasing the potential customer's interest level. And after the consumer is interested in the product or service, then the goal is to make consumers desire it 
moving their mindset from I like it to I want it. And then the ultimate goal is to drive the receiver of the marketing campaign to initiate action and buy this product or service. And of course, as we said before, advertising is fundamentally persuasion. And persuasion happens to be not a science, but mainly an art. And advertising is the art made to order. We need to convince our customer that we offer him the optimum value among our competitors, and we need to create the mm -hmm. desire and push him into action. And of course, the idea of influencers. The idea of influencers, the, the idea that influencers can strongly influence people's opinion and decisions is, is not just an opinion. Uh, almost 70% of consumers are more likely to learn about new products, new services, new events and new places from accounts they follow on social media. And another 45% also say that they would trust a paid influencer recommendation if they already trust this influencer. Okay, so do you want to add something, George, or we can move on? Okay, so we can. No, I, I would like to add that it's not only, it's not only uh, art advertising. It uh, advertising has to do with numbers, especially in media mm -hmm. buying, uh, mm -hmm. media mix, media strategy. So it's a combination. As marketing, it's a combination of art and science. Okay. Okay, and let's move on to the nature of advertising. Okay, so. Uh, the modern, this modern age is actually the era of intense, co intense competition among all product categories. And to withstand competition, uh, uh, producers have to think of new and unfamiliar uses for their products, or they just have to find, to find out new buyers for their products. And to put it more clearly, demand creation is as important as meeting existing demand and for demand creation what is more important is actually advertisement and as uh, uh, actually use the quote that advertisements can do wonders if they are properly done okay so the patent medicine people were the first to prove what advertisement could do that's why they sold rivers of tonics and mountains of pills why because they actually achieved to persuade to, to convince people about the importance of their products. So advertise, advertisement is a message to a large group, okay? Advertising is a massive uh, message. It is the form of non-personal message and communication. And this is actually one of the disadvantages of advertising as well. It convinces the general public to buy the goods or services that are being advertised it is paid for by an advertiser to publisher and also advertising messages usually are identified with the advertiser and it's something that we're going to discuss later with George this one. But apart from the advantages, we also have disadvantages for advertising. We have the weak points that of course we need to mention. As we said before, advertising is, an, is okay. non personal and advertising is actually one-way communication, okay? And sometimes there is too much clutter. So we need to create a really, really interesting, a really creative message in order to be able to catch consumers' attention. And of course, people know it's a paid form of communication. And sometimes this could make them less willing to believe to our message. And but also say some, uh, some advertising messages sometimes are so unprofessional that could damage even the image and credibility of an established brand. And some other people claim that it's a relatively expensive tool, especially if we compare the price of advertising to other alternative communication channels that are becoming more, more and more nowadays. So Yorgo, can we start? explaining the different stages of advertising campaign now? Okay, actually you have 10 stages of this, of an advertising campaign. Uh, 10 very important stages, uh, which we cannot skip. If we skip one of those 10, uh, then we will not achieve 
the objective. We will uh, go through uh, in each one of them uh, later, but just to mention them, it's the research, it's the uh, set of our objectives to define our target group, decide on the budget how much we will invest in advertising, design the strategy, of course, in order to meet the objectives, come up with the right creative message, um, uh, uh, create advertisement, uh, the creation of the uh, advertisement and the execution, design the media and the media mix strategy, run the campaign, and last but not least, the, the valuation. Uh, let's start with, uh, with the research. Okay. Um, before anything, Evie, you want to add? Yes, yes. To do yes. During research? I will, I will start talking about uh, the environment. So like human organizations, corporate organizations, and also brands and products are born and grow in a specific environment. So before we start, we need to uh, explore our environment. So before any other action taking, uh, we need to uh, really, first of all, explore our competition Okay, and we need to be fully aware of our competitor in order to be able to develop a really effective USP, unique selling proposition. What makes our product unique and absolutely different to the rival product? So we need to uh, make it to identify whether we occupy a, un a unique niche and how the market behaves in our industry. Okay, we need to acquire marketing intelligence from exploring the other uh, competitors' strategies. And all this could help us drive our message to the target audience effectively. And of course, we have two ways of conducting the research. We have the qualitative research, qualitative methods, and the quantitative. The quantitative methods are all about, it's all about numbers. Uh, that's why you have a big sample of our potential target group and we ask them questions uh, in order to find answers in certain uh, questions. And the result is numerical, is percentage. 15% of the people we ask answer they will buy our product if so and so. 15, uh, 25% said they like our product to be green or yellow, et cetera, et cetera. Qualitative research now is about reading the mind, entering in the mind of the consumer and see how they think, how they react in different messages, how, what are the criteria in buying decisions and stuff like that. So we invite six to 10 people in focus groups, we discuss with them and we try to find valuable insights in order to help us to produce um, great advertisement or even product uh, creation. Uh, we can use research uh, in order to test our, our message as well. For example, we go there with a draft advertisement, we give it to them and we ask them if they get the message, what message do they get, if uh, they need any clarifications about the advertisement, if uh, they shall suggest any uh, changes, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So research is, is the first very valuable step that we have to take in order to proceed with the adver uh, advertising campaign. Second are the objectives, right, Eddie? Yes, before we start our journey, we need, we, we definitely need to set our objectives. We need to decide what do we want to achieve in a specific period with a specific product or a specific marketing program. Because if we do not have objectives, we actually do not manage, we cannot manage to arrive to our destination, to our uh, desired state. So we need to set objectives. And these objectives should be, of course, ambitious because they actually operate as motivators, okay? But they also need to be realistic and specific. And uh, concerning advertising obje objectives, we have actually four main options. So usually we have the awareness and the informative advertising, which main mission is to create brand awareness 
and knowledge of new products or new features of existing products. We also have persuasive advertising, which aims to create liking, preference, conviction, or buying of a new product. We should remember the AIDA model at this point. Some persuasive advertising uses comparative advertising, which makes an explicit comparison of the attributes of two or more brands. And we also have reminder advertising that aims to stimulate repeat purchase of products and services. And we also have some advertising messages that want to educate people, to educate the target group about how to use a new product or service. And of course, what is really important... Yes. Yes, your goal? Go on. Yes, I, I also have a question. Okay, so... No, I have yes, yes, I have a question. Ah, can you read the question? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, what, the fact that advertising is non-personal is a weak point. Uh, it's a weak uh, point in terms that uh, there is not a chance for dialogue. Okay, mm -hmm. not question and answers. It's one way communication is non personal, so uh, the people know that it's a paid form of communication, advertising, and there is not a chance to uh, come closer to the customer, uh, uh, have a discussion, answer questions, etc. In this way, yes, it is. Okay. But I, I would like to add that what you mentioned comparative advertising in Cyprus and in Europe in general, we have very strict rules about comparative advertising. We are not allowed to um, have a comparative advertising. Unlike the States, which is the, the most likely advertising communication that you will meet, okay? People love uh, comparative advertising, especially if you see the war between Coke and Pepsi, what is going on. I mean, it's amazing, and they are so creative messages. But in uh, Cyprus and in Europe, we have very strict regulations. We can only refer to data, okay? And if you say, for example, we are number one in sales, you have to prove it, okay? Yes. You cannot mention competition, you cannot compare yourself directly with competition. Mm -hmm. Indirectly, yes, and leave some hits, okay? And of course, you are not allowed to blame one of the of the competitive brands, okay? You're not allowed, no. while in the US, no. it's totally different, yes. So, target group, it is actually the third step and one of the most important steps, okay? So, defining your target group is one of the marketer's most important task. Why? Because it actually can be considered as the foundation of all elements of your marketing strategy, from how you develop and name your product or service, right, through to the marketing channels you use to promote them. So the better you understand your target market, the better you will be able to target them with relevant content, relevant messages, and of course, relevant ads. So a target market is the specific group of people that the marketeer wants to reach with your marketing message. And the other people who are most likely to buy your products or services, and they are united by some common characteristics like demographics, uh, behaviors, or psychographics. So what is really important when you're preparing your marketing campaign is to describe your target group as you need to describe the profile of your average user. And this is very important and could enable, could, could enable you to make right, dis right decisions about the other issues, the other elements of the marketing strategy. And what is important, Evi, is that uh, besides demographic, okay, age, uh, sex, uh, mm -hmm. economic groups, uh, lifestyle is very important. Okay. For example, I might have the same age with another man, uh, same socio socioeconomic group, but different lifestyles. That means different people, different okay. needs. So lifestyle, lifestyle is very important, a very important factor in defining your target group. And now let's see uh, one of my favorite, favorite ads on, that let's say gives you're going before exactly before the point you. that you have to speak. Yes, Evie? 
I lost you. Before you move on, let's say that our students are watching us, are attending our webinar, and I'm really happy. And yes, Haristos just mentioned this uh, super advertising by Audi. Do you, do you remember the advertising with Audi with the four bracelets that are actually being one in order to uh, give the message that Audi is actually combining the you need they add the compact the competitive advantages of four different brands do you remember this one yeah, yeah. Okay. that was a beautiful uh, advert. Okay. so okay. let's watch now another advertisement that gives the point that you have to define your target group in order to speak their language <laughs> Ε, τι να σου πω ρε πατέρα Ήμουν στο RPG και είχα φουλάξει το μάνο Και πάτησα πως να τσεκάρω το τσάτα Αν είχε έρθει το διβέξ και κόλλησε Τα έχασα όλα Δοκίμασα control alt delete Αλλά το task manager είχε παγώσει Στη μάνα σου το πες Μήπως ήρθε <laughs> Στη μάνα σου το πες did you tell your mom? Did you discuss it? Okay. If you One don't of the most speak, campaigns in Greece. yeah. Well, if you don't speak the language to your target of your target group, nobody will understand you. That's why you have to define your target group. You have to study our target group in order to approach them the best way. The fourth stage is to decide on the budget. Uh, it's a very important um, stage. Uh, if you notice, I cross over the word spent. We are not spending. If you spend something, you don't get it back. We invest in advertising. We invest money in order to get more back. Okay? There are numerous methods of how to uh, decide on the budget. The best ones are those that are based on objectives, objectives-driven methods. Okay? There are many uh, methods. I will not get into details now. They are very... Uh, statistical and scientific, but the thing that you should remember is that we have to link the objectives with the budget, uh, mm -hmm. which is very important. The strategy that you have to uh, work on in order to meet the objectives, right, Evie? Yes, the advertising strategy is another crucial decision, okay? Because communication effectiveness highly depends on how the message is being expressed and on its content, okay? So creative strategies is, are, is actually the way marketers translate their messages into a specific communication. And we actually have two broad categories of appeals, the informational and the transformational ones. The informational appeals elaborate on products or service characteristics or benefits, and it's usually problem solution ads, pro product demonstration ads, product comparison ads, and also testimonials for both unknown and also celebrity endorsers. Informational appeals usually assume strictly rational processing of the communication on the consumer's part, and they and usually rule and reason, uh, logic and reason rule. On the other hand, transformational appeals elaborate on a non-product related benefit or image, and it might depict what kind of person uses the specific brand or what kind of experience results from using this brand. And these types of this type of appeals often attempt to stir up emotions that will motivate and will urge consumers to buy the specific product. So I know uh, now I would like George to explain the critical importance of selecting the right message. Yes. Uh, message, it's all about the message, right? We all do all this uh, process and the research and uh, uh, study in order to come up with the right message. As you can see, this is uh, Sir Martin Luther King. Um, the the leader of the black people you know, back in the States when there was a racial uh, problem. He came with a, a very inspirational message. I have a dream. People use it until today. Uh, so it's very important to come with the right message. What the client wants to hear from you. What makes you unique. 
what urges people to buy your product, your brand, instead of competition? What is your differentiated factor? So who are you depends on the message that you will give to the public? Uh, messages like, just do it, of Nike, that was produced in 1988. It was much more than a message, much more than a slogan. It was uh, urging people to believe in themselves and make their dreams happen. Avis, we try hard. They were behind, they were number two behind Hertz. And in 1962, they gave the, the promise to the public that we will try hard and become try to become number one. Have a break, have a kick cut. Until today, we have that slogan. It was produced in 1957. 57, so many years. But it's still relevant and contemporary. The real thing, Coke, 1970. Um, you see the message is very important and it characterizes uh, your brand and your position. Let's see now a beautiful uh, TV art, a very old uh, art that passes a very, very powerful uh, message. An event seen from one point of view gives one impression. Seen from another point of view, it gives quite a different impression. But it's only when you get the whole picture you can fully understand what's going on. Such a strong message, uh, it was my fault, it was uh, from uh, the independent newspaper uh, in England. Uh, and of course, every message should be relevant, believable, and specific. Relevant, for example, nowadays, um, brands should know the needs of the people during this coronavirus era, so the messages should be relevant to the needs of the public. Believable. Amy's, we said before, we try hard that we are number two. Such an honor. Such an honor. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and specific. Um, specific. One of the great um, uh, advertisements was that of Ron Steel Pain. And the slogan was, uh, it does what exactly says on the team. It was very, very specific. So the message is very important. Okay? And we have different ways on how to pass this message, really. right? Yes. Okay. We have slices of life. Yes. yes. Okay. You can pass it through lifestyle uh, images, uh, virtual world, emotional. That we see many brands using emotion in order to pass their, pass their message. It might be based on music, uh, for example, uh, what was the Cadbury's ad was mm -hmm. totally based on music. Influencers, mm -hmm. and leaders giving testimonials, giving, uh, using scientific uh, research uh, data, etc., etc. There are so many ways to pass uh, a message. Let's watch this. Here's to the crazy ones the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Such a great art, such a great art. One of the best of all times. And the idea behind that is that Apple had a vision uh, that many of the people, I mean, they were making fun of. Like the personality so-and-so, that they 
design their own road to success in different paths. And many times, and most of them were given unflattering labels many times. So cheers to the crazy ones, here's to the crazy ones, because those who believe that they will change the world, those they will change it. And Apple indeed changed the world in many aspects. Insights, very important. Insights are the clues in the mind of people that tells us about the behavior, the whys. Why do people decide that? How, what are the criteria in deciding what brand to, to buy and what brand not to? Uh, they are very important. Many insights are obvious, many insights are not that obvious. That's why you have to fight as marketeers and advertisers in order to spot uh, some of the insights of people in order to use them uh, in our advertisements. I will give you some examples now. In When uh, Mars went for the first time, Mars uh, Chocolates went to Russia for uh, uh, the first time they were selling like crazy, but guess what? They were selling only in winter, not in summer. Mars chocolates and ice creams, especially ice creams, they were not selling in summer. Why? Because there were not refrigerated trucks to take the product to the selling point. That was an insight. Another insight is that uh, Philips, when they introduced the new um, electronic shaving machine, they couldn't sell in Japan, okay? And that was because of the insight that Japanese, they have small hands, so the grip of the machine was too big for them and they couldn't reach the button, so they had to design some other, okay, uh, shaving machines for, for, Spain, for uh, Japan or Spain. Pepsi couldn't sell their one liter bottle in Spain, why? Because of an insight, Spanish people do not have huge re refrigerators of their houses. They have small ones, so they couldn't fit. All those are insight. Or VIX, vaporate, the VIX. They found out that in Mexico, they could sell two or three times per capita uh, the, the, the amount of VIX that they could sell in other places in the world. And the insight was that mothers in Mexico they put wigs not only in the throat of their babies, but in the chest and on the back. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. why they produce another advertisement wigs showing how to put wigs on the chest, on the back. So there was more con consumption of wigs. Okay. And a great insight, Evie, for free, free tips now during the coronavirus uh, area. Actually, I'm I know many people that. I'm reading the the comments on uh, the live chat that's why i'm laughing sometimes okay okay you will tell us later yes. um another insight uh, most of us are having uh online meetings now mm -hmm. okay uh yeah. but i know many people especially uh, friends girls etc they put perfume before they go online to have a meeting because they want to feel well nobody's going to smell them but they want to feel yes. this is a great insight for perfume companies or brands to come up with a creative uh, yes. message. This is a free tip. Can you yes. tell us the, the comments that make you laugh? Uh, yes, actually, I have a, a demand, first of all, a requirement. Uh, whether um, someone is uh, asking whether they can find the projects that you are presenting. Okay, so I have this question, first of all. Online. Online, okay, yeah. anyway. Of course, they, they, they can have the link and, uh, and watch us later, so they can refer to the project online. I'm refer whatever I'm referring to mm -hmm. is online, okay? Okay. Everything and, is online too. Okay, that's great. And yes, we have a surprise comment that, wow, well, today I learned that Mars is not going really well in, in the Russian market, so yes. And actually, based on, what, very well. based on what you were selling uh, before, yes. do you know that the profitability of cosmetic products went up during the crisis and not down? And someone would expect the opposite. I, no, it may, I don't think it went up. 
but uh, the inside of wearing a perfume to feel well to go to an online meeting is very important. And you see, you know, we don't do advertisements just for sales or just for profits. We do advertisements for other things as well. Okay. And I will come back, I will go forward to um, our case study in a while. We'll see Dove case study. Mm -hmm. how they try to make the people, and especially women, feel good. It, it was not about sales. It's about making people feel good. Okay, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. So, so process, I, had, I was uh, fortunate enough to serve the advertising industry for almost 25 years. That was my favorite process. The brainstorming, where um, people from various departments in the advertising agency sit together, have a great time, they laugh, they throw ideas from the silliest idea. There are no silly ideas, of course, in brainstorming, but it's a built up process. Somebody says something, somebody says something else, you build on that until you have this great idea, and everybody says, Wow, we found it. This is a magical moment. It can take from an hour to many hours. It, I experienced brainstorming that took three days until we end up with a great idea. This is a very nice process. And let's pause this. Okay. Oh, sorry. Let me say that uh, introducing this advertisement that was mm. inspired by the wedding of Prince William back in uh, in England uh, a few years ago. It was a huge happening. So a company took advantage of this and saw the inside of people to try to, they wanted to be there in the church to see what is happening, to experience this moment. So a company took advantage of it. One's life is for sharing, T-Mobile. So mm -hmm. nice, huh? It's very nice. Um, Sorry. Maybe you have to be in a hurry. You, you, you only have 10 minutes. 
Yes. Yes, I'll be really mm -hmm. brief. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So let's move on to the eighth stage. That is actually the media mix. Yes. You're all sorry, but there is a delay in sound. Did you say something? Okay. So let's continue with the media mix strategy. No, no. Yes. Okay. So we say that there are five major decisions in developing an advertising program, the five M's as they're called. So it's mission, money, message, measurement, and of course it's media. Okay. So the selection of media is very important because it's it, ha it highly influences both the impact and also the cost of advertising. And we have an increasing number of different alternatives to use as media to convey our message. We have TV, newspapers, magazines, radio, of course, outdoor advertising, of course, the more and more popular digital advertising, and of course, social media. And we actually need to use some criteria in order to make the final decision and design, compose the media mix that we will use in order to convey our message to the target group. So when you are preparing to advertise a new product or service, it's very important to uh, consider about the type of media that you want to use. And of course, there are many benefits to using a different medium, okay? But you need to make the final selection and decide which is the, the most ideal for you. First of all, we need to think about, we need to consider penetration, we need to consider our target group and how our target group is using media. So, for example, we know that youth is highly using social media and that youth is highly is being highly influenced by social media. So, if we want, if our target group is composed of youth, social media is a very critical medium that we need to use. We also need to consider the advantages and disadvantages of each of our alternative media. So, for example, we know that TV permits the seller to repeat a message many times. It allows the buyer to receive and compare messages of various competitors. Okay, large-scale advertising refle uh, reflects something positive about the seller's size, power, and success. And also television is providing us with the possibility of dramatization. On the other hand, a TV commercial is really short. So if we need, if we need time in order to elaborate and explain in detail the different characteristics of our product or services, or if we need to educate our customers on how to use this product, then probably TV has major limitations for us. The other criterion is actually the objectives, our objectives, the advertising objectives. So if our objective is to educate our target group, then again, we need a medium that offers us the possibility of uh, providing the customers with large text. And of course, cost is also very important. Cost is an important factor, factor to consider when choosing your media, okay? Ads in certain types of media are more expensive than others. And also you will likely pay more for television and radio ads and uh, compared to magazine and newspaper ad placements okay, that are more affordable. But even within the same medium, there, there is a variety of different costs. So cost is always something that we need to take into consideration when we actually make the final decision about media buying. And of course, then it's the time to run the campaign. And George? Running the campaign is, uh, is the, 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 the time where you have to put all your efforts on air and uh, hopefully uh, the advertisement will speak to the public and uh, hopefully you find the right mediums, the right media to place your advertisement in order to be effective. And of course, last but not least, the campaign evaluation. Nothing finishes without evaluating the campaign. We should see if we were effective. And we can see this in different ways. We can check sales, we can see the coupon redemption, we can see the participation in various competitions. Of course, advertising is not the only criterion in order to have the final say. There is a very important um, saying that English people say, you can take the horse to the lake, but you cannot force it to drink water. It means that 
the advertising might do a splendid job, okay? Take the, the, the person to the selling point, the sales point, but because you have a terrible salesperson there, you will not sell. Or because we have a uh, uh, very weak distribution system, people will not find your product uh, where they should find it. So there are many factors uh, that play a very important role in sales. We don't judge advertising only in sales. That's why you have other research and metrics in order to evaluate the penetration of and the effectiveness of our message in the public. Now, because we don't have time, this is one of the, this is, it was voted the best advertising campaign of the 21st century. And going back to the needs that we were talking about, what Dove is selling, mm -hmm. uh, Dove is not selling uh, soaps or cosmetics or anything. Dove is selling self-confidence with this campaign. And it was a campaign that was named the, uh, the Dove campaign for real beauty. Okay, it was a 360 marketing campaign, and the objective was to celebrate the natural physical beauty of women and inspire women to feel good and comfortable with themselves. And that was based on very important insights. They found out that 95, uh, no, uh, most of the advertisements that uh, cosmetic advertisements address to women. They show women that they, are, they do not belong to the majority of the population. They are 5%. They are idols. They are the idea. There is the, the ideal image of the woman they want to project. And Dove says, this is not real. This is unrealistic. We don't want models. We are not living in a world of models. We don't want to be models. Okay? So, regardless of the age, we want to really good. And the initial campaign was based on very important insights. They found out through research that only 4% of women consider themselves beautiful. 96, they didn't feel beautiful. They didn't feel comfortable with themselves. 50% of women, they think that female beauty is too narrowly defined and they, that they didn't belong in this group. And two-thirds of women they said that media and advertising set unrealistic standards and they will never be beautiful. So that was an issue. And Dove came up and said, okay, we don't want this, we don't want cliches, we want people and women to feel comfortable with themselves because beauty is not about modeling, it's not about models, okay? It's about ordinary women. So the creative brief uh, to uh, the, the agency, the creative team was, okay, beauty brands portray perfection and alienate. Okay, we don't want that. The communication objective is to democratize beauty. It is to show that uh, everybody is beautiful. We speak to ordinary women and beauty is more than skin deep. Let's redefine, let's restore femininity, which is a beautiful single-minded proposition. And they came up with this beautiful campaign. It went for a decade and it's endless, okay? Showing women, ordinary women, real women in different stages of their lives, feeling good of themselves. It's a beautiful campaign. Yes, and I confirm that the females really like this campaign. Because it actually no, no. supports and promotes diversity, which is very important. Yes. Yes. And it's a huge social impact, okay? If we think about uh, the high percentages of uh, eating disorders that uh, women are struggling with. So I think it's it's a crucial campaign. Uh, we don't have time to do the video, huh, Evie? No. Or I'm should we, sure. we close with that? Yes, I think that we close. Hmm? I feel, I apologize for not being able to reply to all comments and questions because there are many, okay? And as you can understand, the time is really limited to have a discussion and webinar with George Zervidis. But I think that uh, we achieved a really effective time management. We could talk for many hours. I urge you to find this video 
Uh, it's a video of a dove. Uh, it's about the real beauty video uh, where women describe themselves and the person sketches them uh, and they describe themselves uh, not that beautiful. And the other women, women they describe uh, uh, the, the woman that she doesn't appreciate herself more beautiful than what she thinks she is. So the message is that you are more beautiful than you think. And okay, another um, campaign and uh, video you can see online is mm -hmm. about uh, the night campaign. Uh, it's very important, the Colin Kaepernick campaign. Uh, you should fight, believe in something, even if it means sacrificing everything. And uh, there is another video answering the question, is everything marketing? I believe maybe not 100%, but 98% everything is marketing. I another would say 99.9%, Yorgos. .9 Sorry? I would say 99.9%. .9 okay, okay. Uh, shall we close with that? It's only three minutes. I don't know. Uh, yes, I think that our uh, DL department will enable us to do though. Thank you so much, all of Thank all you. Of everybody. You Thank you very much, George, for sharing this webinar with me. And let's close with an interesting video, I think. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Thank you, everybody. Hope you have a good day.